Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons, I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how I paint a Tyranid Termagant from the Leviathan box set that Games Workshop kindly sent to me. So I had this thought that it could be fun to paint some Tyranids in different color schemes just to test some different stuff out and I thought it would be fun if I painted them in the sort of uh, colors of the four seasons, so winter, spring, summer and autumn. And I decided to start first off with the winter one, so that is what you can see the tutorial for here. I started off, as you can see, with a model that's been primed using a white primer, and the one I have used is White Scars from Citadel. I then gave the entire body a quick wash of the Achillean Green contrast paint. Next up, I grabbed my Volopus Pink, and I used that for all the sort of armor plates on the back of the Termagant. I'm not quite sure what it's called. I'm sure it has a specific name, um, but I can't quite recall it. So in this video, I'll just call it uh, armor plates, and I hope, uh, I hope you'll forgive me for that. When the two colors were all dry, I grabbed my uh, trusty dry brush, which is actually an old makeup brush, and I used that to do a quick layer of dry brushing, just using a matte white from the Army Painter. And I did this because I wanted to do a sort of a slap chop method to get the base colors done with. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's the perfect method always for any sort of painting, but it gets the job done really quickly. And this is, after all, something I was just testing out. So I didn't want to take ages and ages to do really perfect blends. I just wanted to see what it would look like with these colors I had in mind. Then I painted the armor plates using another contrast paint, and this one is called Croxigo Scales, which is a really lovely sort of deep but still vibrant turquoise-ish color and um, I'm getting really fond of it. I have already gone through I think two pots of it. I just really like it. Then I took another contrast paint and this one is called Briar Queen Chill and it's one of the newer contrast paints and I have only worked with it a few times and, the th and, and those times I didn't actually really like it a lot but I thought it might work uh, for uh, this particular project. It's not that much of a contrast paint, it's more like a glaze or something, but I wanted it to help smooth out the um, the highlights and shadows on the body, and I actually think it did its job fairly well. I then went over the gun using Lokshan Purple, which is also a contrast paint. I thought I wanted uh, all the colors to be kept in some sort of nice, cool tones, so uh, I, thought a, um, I thought a purple gun would probably fit the color scheme r relatively well. I then quickly went over the uh, body of the book using the Achillean Green once more, just because the Briar Queen chill had sort of dulled everything down a little bit too much and hidden some of the shadows that I wanted to make sure were easily visible so that the model was still easy for you to read at a distance. So I just quickly went over it. Again, you could do this much more smoothly, but this is just sort of a test piece trying out an idea. So I didn't want it to, you know, you spend ages on doing everything really nice and smooth. Then I highlighted the flesh of the bug creature and I did that using the Army Painters Matte White. I had uh, mixed it with a little bit of painting medium to get it to the consistency of a glaze. And I just used that for everything where I thought it would look cool if it had a little bit of a highlight, as you can see here on the arms, on the face and on, also on the uh, legs. And again, you could do that... Um, building up the layers with a lot of patience and a lot of time, but I was testing it out, so I did it quite quickly. I think it, it shows it would have been even better if I had spent more time on it, but I just really wanted to test the concept more than I wanted to uh, paint a sort of display quality mini or anything. This is just for fun and just for testing stuff out, and so I thought it was, uh, yeah, it was completely good enough for that. For highlighting the armor on the back of the bug creature, I mixed up a bit of quantum green with some blaster blue, both paints from huge miniatures and both of them are also fluorescent paints. And uh, if you want yourself some uh, nice fluorescent paints, I'll leave a link in the show notes. I have a discount code with which nets you 5% off and also helps support the channel. You'll notice I do both some quick sort of uh, horizontal lines and then I also do an edge highlight. And I do both of these things, both to add some uh, visual interest, some texture to the armor plates. And then the edge highlight is done to make sure that it's very easy for you to see where each plate separates. And again, I think this, uh, I think it looks cool, but I also think it helps you to know what the model is about at a single glance. So like making it easier for you to read the miniature, which I always think is important, especially when you 
and use so many different weird colors that I usually do in my color schemes. It helps, uh, it helps with making sure that the model is not entirely too busy to look at, I think at least. I am sure a lot of people would disagree. For the last layer of highlight, I mixed in a bit of uh, white with the quantum green and the blaster blue, and I used that in the exact same way, except I only used a little bit less of it to make sure that the original highlight color would be the one that would shine through the most. The gun was then highlighted using ultraviolet, also from Huge Miniatures, and I have to say, I'm not entirely convinced by the purple gun. I don't, I'm not sure that was um, the right decision, the right call to go with purple for this. But at this point, I was just, yeah, as I said, this is something I was just testing out, just experimenting with and having fun. So I didn't want to redo the entire thing just because I did not really feel the purple gun. Um, so I just highlighted it and called it a day. The last layer of highlight on the purple gun was just some ultraviolet mixed with a little bit of white. And lastly, I applied some liquid frost from Green Stuff World to the uh, top end of the back on the uh, Thermagond. Um, it is sort of a, I think it's a sol some kind of salt water solution that has some special chemical properties that ended, end up making it look like this, like you have some frost um, crystals almost. And uh, the idea for this was actually inspired by a video so, saw by Midwinter Minis where they had applied glitter and all sorts of weird things to the back of their Termagons and it just looked so much fun. And so I thought why not do that for my uh, Four Seasons uh, Tyranids. So in this one I really wanted to add some texture and that became the Liquid Frost as you can see here. If you want to work with Liquid Frost you need to be a little bit patient. It takes some time to build up the layers and you need quite a few layers for it to actually look like you have these ice crystals. I think I did about seven or eight layers for this effect. And also bear in mind that these are sort of salt crystals, so they are quite fragile. I mean, I wouldn't say you shouldn't use this on a, on a, a model that you want to use for gaming purposes. Just perhaps be aware that you might need to add a little bit more liquid frost from time to time in between games. And I certainly would add, uh, recommend that you magnetize the mini so you don't have it uh, pushed around with some foam or something because that will certainly ruin the effect very quickly. But anyways, here is the uh, finished model. And I have to say, even though it's a little bit different from my usual uh, color palette, uh, it was actually quite fun and also a little bit challenging to limit myself to the sort of cold color colors that would fit the winter theme. Um, so it was fun and it was challenging and I quite look forward to doing the, uh, doing the next ones for uh, spring and autumn and summer as well. So uh, at least uh, I can still tell it's my mini because it glows under UV light like almost all of my minis do. It just, um, yeah. It's useless, but fun. <laughs> so if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the next three uh, Four Seasons Tyranids, the ones for uh, spring, summer, and autumn, please let me know as well. That would be awesome. Uh, also, if you have any other stuff that you'd like to know uh, or anything you'd like to discuss about the channel, please also get in touch. I try to get back to as many people in the comments section as I possibly can. And as always, last but certainly not least, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the wonderful people who support this channel on Patreon. So thank you to Thomas Masson, Scott Broadway, Andrew Correa, Anthony Paul Castro, Queen's Wolf, JJ Walsh, Gwenael, Mola Mola, TJ Kubiak, Mando Project, Starcon85, Espear, Echinococcus, Firelord21 and Elliot Philby. If you would like to also support this channel on Patreon, I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.